Welcome to GovCast, connecting with federal IT's top decision makers. I'm your host, Catherine McPhail, and today we are joined by Tom Santucci, GSA's Director of Government-Wide Policy for the Data Center Optimization Initiative, or DCOI, as well as CloudSmart. The DCOI category officially sunset from the FITARA scorecard after all agencies received an A grade this past January. From 2012 to 2021, data center closures and optimization brought government an estimated $6.6 billion in cost savings and avoidances. Data center and energy management also plays a key role in sustainability goals and the Biden administration's target to hit net zero federal emissions by 2050. Here to tell us more is Tom. Tom, thank you so much for joining us today. So to kick off this episode, I wanted to ask you sort of the big question, which is, why is sustainability important to you? Well, it's important to the administration. We support uh, OMB and all of their uh, executive orders. And sustainability is, it wasn't originally important to me, but once I started to understand the problem and how IT plays a role in meeting the federal government goals, I think it became important to me. And then I um, did a little market research on what the uh, market was providing in terms of sustainability solutions on the IT. That's when I really felt engulfed in doing the Data Center Sustainability Summit, which was quite successful in, in putting awareness to the uh, to the solution to our uh problem in meeting uh, the executive order mandates on the Clean Energy Act. You just mentioned the Data Center Sustainability Summit, which happened, I believe, last April. I'm curious what we would say maybe your the biggest takeaways from that were. That it's really being market driven. It's not the government that necessarily is, is mandating this. It's, it's private industry that's really uh, moving in this direction. A lot of the commercial uh, customers of the data centers in Ashburn and across the country are mandating that they have sustainability plans, not only for energy consumption or uh, using renewables, but from a resilience standpoint. We need alternative energy and uh, we need to produce it. And it's generally from clean energy. Uh, The power companies are just not able to keep up with the load. So it's offsetting some of that. Absolutely. And I think um, that topic of resilience comes up a lot in sustainability conversations. And it's also interesting to see the crossover because it really is also from a national security perspective, a huge priority and a really important consideration. I'm wondering if you could give us a brief overview of the history of the data center optimization initiative. Sure. The, um, it really started in 2016 when uh, OMB put out a memo of uh, M1619, and they introduced cloud first at the same at the same time. And uh, so agencies were required to report on their data center inventory just like they did in previous years under the Federal Data Center Consolidation Initiative. But A couple things happened that my office became the managing partner with OMB on DCOI and CloudSmart. And we were preparing to launch the data center marketplace where agencies could participate in and share their data centers with other agencies. And then in 2017, uh, FATARA and DCOI were both extended. We were happy about that. And then 2018, we are gearing up for our office, along with OMB, developed the Cloud Smart policy, our strategy document, and DCOI 2.0 policy. Uh, and then 2019, it got released. And I, to accompany that, we did the application rationalization playbook. And we, we did some uh, app wrap pilots as well. And I was at an agency at the time, and I I actually participated in the APRAP pilot. Uh, and a couple of other things that uh, M1919 did was the introduction of key mission facilities and then the l- elimination of the non-tier data centers from the inventory. 
And then uh, finally, the, uh, there was a one-liner in the uh, NDAA uh, in FY20 that pushed DCOI through September 22. And now that pushed it through 22? F yeah, September 2022. Right. So I guess looking back at everything you've accomplished and sort of how far government has come in that time, are there any sort of major milestones you would like to highlight from that? Well, we are, yes, we are not really good at defining data centers uh, or physical structure and calling it a data center. It's still, uh, there's still a lot of non-tier data centers in the uh, inventory that we'd like to close and pay attention to. Uh, that's why we, that's why APRAT was really born is, is look at the compute rather than the uh, physical structure of a building and to find out where your data is. I mean, the data is the most important thing you want uh, to maintain on. So I would like to, continue to worry about those. Absolutely. Going back to sort of the premise of DCOI, I'm wondering if you can tell us what some of the advantages are to shifting to industry-owned data centers and also maybe what the, the challenges are as well associated with that process. Yeah. I've, I've walked through many federal facilities and I've walked through a lot of data centers in Ashburn, Virginia. Uh, and just a couple off the top is increased productivity. We, we can uh, do maintenance. They can do per, uh, perform maintenance on the facility without disrupting any of the uh, services inside the facility. So there's no downtime to do maintenance. And innovation is a big thing. That's one thing I, I, I noticed comparing the two is the federal government can leverage innovative technology by shifting to industry-owned data centers. And we can leverage the fast pace of IT innovation in industry. We also do need to keep hiring data center-specific workforce, which the government struggles to do today. And some data centers can now support local communities via excess heat from waste products to provide water and heating, for example. And also using, and I include cloud and data center providers, using cloud commercial data centers or even software as a service can provide a lot of environmental and sustainability benefits compared to using agency owned on-prem data centers. And that was the main course of doing the data center sustainability summit. And we can stipulate in our acquisitions of IT that data center companies use a predetermined amount of green energy as mandated by the uh, Energy Act of 2020. And then the financial impact, um, commercial data centers could be more expensive if costs are not well understood. The government uses different colors of money to, to provide data center facilities, and IT normally is unaware of the facility cost. However, when using a commercial colo facility or cloud, these are all procured solely by IT. And we can clearly delineate the cost of running a data center if we do better reporting. And I believe physical security is one benefit on a commercial colo. If you ever uh, visited one, there is huge amounts of data, uh, physical security uh, provided by those colo providers. And most of our data centers are sitting in office buildings and anybody with a PIF card can probably access some of those facilities. And if you think about the zero trust, it's, you know, it's, you want total security over your, your environment, whether it be physical or uh, virtual. And then we can reduce the risk by separating data centers from the office building. Absolutely. It sounds like... <laughs> From security, financial, and you know, sustainability considerations, there are a lot of benefits towards moving to industry-owned data centers. Sort of moving to a, a tricky question about that sort of energy consumption question. We hear a lot that cloud computing is a more sustainable solution for data management and business operations compared to legacy solutions. 
But I'm curious if you could go into how we go about measuring that. It can be sort of a hard thing to calculate and grasp because there is so much that goes into calculating emissions in a workflow. So, you know, a smaller scale example would be <laughs> in a public restroom when you're choosing between paper hand towels or an electric hand dryer. How do you take into account, you know, the electricity used to operate the hand dryer, the embodied emissions in both devices, the entire supply chain to determine what is the most sustainable solution? Well, the measurement is hard to calculate at a granular level. Instead, we look at the macro level. Portfolio management is really at the heart of all of this. You need an inventory of applications and associated hardware to fill, fulfill the agency mission. How each piece fits in the equation and assess annually if it is filling the need. If I can virtualize an application, I'm going to use less energy. And that is more sustainable. Also, in general, a more modern cloud native application is more sustainable because it scales according to demand. If I spin up those servers up or down as I need, then I'll use obviously less energy. And then the Energy Act of 2020 mandates the federal government reduce greenhouse gases, and IT, I believe, has a role in meeting these goals. GSA is leading in many fronts. They're leading transition into the zero emissions federal footprint from making our buildings more efficient, flexible, and interactive with the energy grid to greening our federal fleet and powering our operations with 24 by 7 carbon pollution-free electricity. We're aligning standards, sharing facilities, improving data center building operations, and increasing sophistication in measuring performance and all leading the government to move to a more sustainable environment. And industry is moving aggressively to measure the, their success towards zero emissions. There are opportunities to partner with industry to measure the federal government's footprint. And given that role, Agencies can look at the IT sector as a partner to help with the best practices for meeting these sustainability goals. Many major public cloud providers, AWS, Google, and Microsoft, just to name a few, provide tools for measuring greenhouse gas emissions versus traditional on-prem environments, which is a valuable reporting tool. Absolutely. And I know this is all part of the White House's executive orders calling for, and the federal sustainability plan setting goals to achieve carbon pollution-free electricity sector by 2035 and net zero emissions economy-wide by 2050, which are large, important goals that this is definitely a big part of. Pivoting a little bit, I was wondering if you could tell us about the successes from the recent Vitara card data center consolidation scores. Yes. All 24 agencies received an A in the December 2021 FATARA scorecard for the DCY initiative. Continuing the great work that agencies have completed in consolidating and optimizing their data center inventory. And then the federal government has really realized uh, a total of $6.6 .6 billion in cost savings and avoidances through the data center closures. And this was from 2012 to 2021. Thousands of data centers, in fact, 6,190 have closed through DCOI and FDCCI. And at the same time, agencies have adopted virtual hosts, identified data centers with energy metering, and making a next step to IT infrastructure optimization efforts to focus on compute rather than the physical structures. Fantastic. Those are, those are great accomplishments. I'm wondering if as part of that process, you can tell us how you worked with agency leaderships to get them invested in the DCOI goals and right-sizing their data center footprint. So we managed the cloud and infrastructure community of practice, which I co-chair, which has over 4,000 members of the federal IT workforce. And we share industry best practices, agency experiences, and IT modernization and establish working groups for specific topics. And there we serve as agents, information brokers, and provide subject matter expertise to agencies. And we drive federal agencies to implement cost-effective and efficient cloud and data center and infrastructure solutions. 
And as we mentioned, we've also recently hosted the Data Center Sustainability Summit, which we highlighted and celebrated the energy, environmental, and in infrastructure benefits that result from the transition from government owned data centers to commercially owned facilities. Cloud computing and software as a service that can help the federal agency reach its sustainability goals. Great. Looking to the future, what work comes next for data center and cloud optimization? First, we, sh we should track how much cloud the government is operating in. Then we need to continue to promote APRAT, which is, was introduced in 2019, and have a renewed emphasis on portfolio management. This will empower CIOs, CDOs, CTOs, and enterprise architects to accurately manage agency IT modernization efforts, including the adoption of cloud technology, zero trust, and customer experience at the application level. Application rationalization is a technology and cultural shift that will empower agency IT leaders and practitioners in better identifying the applications and services to support the agency's mission. To support that effort, we released an application rationalization playbook, which outlines the steps agencies should follow to rationalize their application portfolios. And a couple of other things I wanna mention is uh, Berkeley Labs, is the center of expertise for energy efficiency and data centers. The FEMP program works with its stakeholders to enable federal agencies to meet energy related goals, identify affordable solutions, facilitate public and private partnerships and provide energy leadership to the country by providing and leveraging in, uh, government best practices. And also the Data Center Energy Practitioner Program, DSEP, to train agency staff on how to build, maintain, and operate data centers going forward. Great. Tom, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. GovCast, along with CyberCast and HealthCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. For more podcasts and to check out the other shows, head to govciomedia.com. Watch out for new episodes released every Tuesday and Wednesday across our shows. You can follow all of them in your favorite podcast platform. And if you like what you heard, make sure to let us know by leaving a review. And if you have any topics you think we should look into, contact us at newsletter at gcio.com.